Ask, and ye well will receive. Just 24 hours after doing a video about the largest air battle of the 21st century breaking out over Pakistan and India, and its relevance to the United States, specifically the United States Navy, because of its beyond visual range air-to-air -air combat that lasted for an hour or more. This story came through, and sorry for how this is being done today, I have a uh, audio problem with my laptop. U.S. Navy's AIM 174B air-to-air -air missile spotted in Japan. On May 4th, 2025, during a Friendship Day event held at the United States Marine Corps Air Station Iwa Iwakuni, Japan, the United States Navy publicly unveiled the AIM 174B air launch variant of the SM-6 for the first time, mounted under the wing of an F-A-18F. As you can clearly see, mounted under its wing is an SM-6. Is this a response to Chinese threat? I think it clearly is. A CV-5 represents the U.S. Navy's frontline aviation unit in the Indo-Pacific region where it actively counters the growing military capabilities of China and North Korea. Notably, China has already fielded beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles such as the PL-15 with an estimated range of 200 kilometers. We now know that that missile is highly effective. And the range of 200 kilometers clearly is for the export version. And it now appears that the domestic version has a range of close to 300 kilometers. And when you're getting into their other miss their other air-to-air -air missiles, the PL-21, with a reported range of already 300 kilometers, in contrast, well, let's just get back to the story. China has already fielded beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles such as the PL-15 with an estimated range of 200 kilometers and the PL-21 reportedly reaching 300 kilometers. In contrast to the U.S. Navy's lar longest range air-to-air -air missile to date, which has been the AIM-120D with a range of approximately 180 kilometers. To close this gap, the United States has initiated the development of the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile which also slated for Navy service. However, details regarding its acquisition and timeline production schedule remain unclear, and developments with operational units have not yet been confirmed. In context, the AIM-174B 120, AIM stands out as a highly effective example of cap capability acceleration through the adaptation of existing missile system. By reproduce, repurposing the standard Missile 6 for air launch, the Navy has rapidly fielded a weapon that surpasses the range of current Chinese beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles. Like the original SM-6, the AIM-174B holds the potential to perform in a variety of missile pro mission profiles, making it a versatile multi-role weapon. The SM-6 is also our primary anti-ballistic missile naval weapon. It was used repeatedly in our battle with the Houthis. Part of what I'm going to get to here is the uh, production woes we have with the SM-6. The major problem right now is we can't produce it in the numbers required. We can produce things like the Sidewinder in thousands, in the thousands, over a couple of years. But right as we speak right now, we only have the capability of about 180 SM-6 missiles per year. These are overall production numbers. This isn't specifically for the air launch version or the naval version. Let's get a little into that. Supplier bottlenecks threaten U.S. Navy effort to grow arms stockpile. We're just going to cut to the chase. On the standard Missile 6 program, Raytheon's current contract calls for about 100 missiles a year over the course of the next two multi-year contracts. That rate will increase to 150, eventually 200 a year. Navy budget doc documents call for the purpose purchase of standard missile variants to increase from its years-long annual procurement rate of 125 to 200 by FY226 and then 300 by fiscal year 2028. 
The Navy previously awarded $200 million to specifically increase SM-6 production, and as Erzen, Ernzen and Raytheon used the money to expand its own production and test facilities as well as help others, some other suppliers. The rocket motor supply base is the remaining piece needed to make 200 SM-6 annually. For the Maritime Strike Tomahawk, the Navy wants to double production rates by 2027. On the AIM 9X program, which is also the high demand globally, as both an air to air missile and a surface to air weapon that can be purchased, used in national advanced surface to air missile systems, air defense platform fielded with Ukraine forces. Raytheon is being asked to grow its production by more than 1,000 missiles a year by 2027 to 2,500. That's the kind of production rate we need for the SM6. If we're going to stock all of our ships with SM6, there'll be other missiles, of course, but your primary defense weapon is going to be the SM6. You need to be able to produce it and produce it in quantity. In quantity. And I have here one final article. This is from GovConWire. Navy awards $908 million contract to Raytheon for SM-6 missile production. What's becoming clear is that the Beyond Visual Range air-to-air -air missile is absolutely vital to fleet defense and aerial combat overall. What we saw happen in Pakistan with the Pakistanis having their fighters stay low and fast, radio silent, electromagnetically silent, fire their missiles, have their AWACS guide those missiles mid-course, only to have those missiles turn on their own seeker heads 20 to 30 kilometers out while those aircraft remain silent. Now we don't know of any Pakistani losses. India claims some, but they're not giving numbers. Pakistan isn't going to give any either, understandably. But what we do know is that a minimum of five Indian aircraft were struck by PL-15 long-range air-to-air missiles used in the method I just described. Fired from silent, electromagnetically and radio silent aircraft beyond visual range, about 145 to 150 kilometers from within Pakistan, guided mid-course to their targets and to see the United States Navy be innovative enough to take one of the most capable surface air missile systems in the world, the SM-6, strap it to an F-18, put everything in place, and now you have one of the longest beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles in the world, also known for its effectiveness, battle proven, and needed in vast quantities. Now whether we can produce those in the vast quantities required is another thing altogether. Do I think we can? If we make the proper investments, absolutely. If we open other production facilities, absolutely. Which is absolutely necessary if we plan to have a fight with China. Now I don't want to fight, but you always prepare for it. Peace through strength. That's the motto of this channel. And as of this moment, we found out that there was a missile gap with China and the United States in the Pacific. That gap needs to be closed. Clearly, we have the capabilities in the weapon systems to counter. What we need is the capability to produce them. I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like, subscribe, share it with a friend, let them know. United States, we need SM-6, we need lots of SM-6, we need them so much because we need to be strapping them to our aircraft. Thank you, from the road.